All right, so here we are on All Hallows Eve Eve, October 30th. The goal by uh, 11.59 tonight is to get Assignment 5 uploaded. And Assignment 5 has three requirements. It's what we've been working on. It's the spot illustration. The three requirements are a pencil sketch or a digital sketch, right? Clean line art that we turn into a vector and then post as a PNG, and then raster color behind. So what have I posted so far? What have I demonstrated so far? I've demonstrated my pencil sketch and then my clean vector line art uh, opened in Photoshop onto a new canvas that's 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch, dragged my EPS vector file onto that, and then saved it as a PNG with the background turned off. So in my assignment five folder, I will have that EPS file, this one. And that is the one that's going to open up into Photoshop. So here's the Photoshop file I have. And what you'll notice is my line art is a smart object. This is the only way you can get clean vector line art as a smart object in a raster program like Photoshop. If I check my image size, which is always good to check, I want to make sure I'm at a high enough resolution. And if I'm not, I can change it. I can resample it to be whatever size, whatever resolution I want. Because this is coming from an EPS file that I dragged and dropped in, this will resize perfectly no matter what the pixel dimensions. Because remember, vector files, infinitely scalable. So I suggest 11 by 14 by 350 for our posters. So check your image size before we start adding color. The next thing I suggest is that you find inspirations for your coloring. So this is a, an independent comic called Rutabaga, the adventure chef that I like. It uses basically simple flat color with bright white highlights and then occasionally it will use duotone color which splits a local color into a light and a dark tone and then it uses a lot of half tones in its backgrounds half tones are these these uh little mechanical dots that kind of look like bricks in a wall and i just really like the palette i like the warmth of it and so what I'm going to do is with these inspirations, right, I'm going to bring that image in right into my assignment in Photoshop. Because if I do that, then I can steal the colors directly from them. Ah, I don't want that. So this was a, a format that wasn't supported by Photoshop, so it opened up in a different format. So let me fix that, just change it to a JPEG format. Uh, yeah, I don't want to open a new Adobe program right now, but here. It's called Camera Raw. It's for AVIF formats. I should have noticed that. Let's get out of this. It's the downside of having the full Creative Cloud suite is you get a whole lot of stuff you don't want. Yep. Let's see if it lets me out. Here we go. OK. <laughs> so how could I avoid all of that? Simple. When it's an unfamiliar format, you open it in preview. Open with preview on a Mac. And then you export it as a JPEG, as a familiar format. And then we just use the JPEG instead of these raw formats. TIFFs can be like that as well. So AVIF is another one of those archive formats. There it is. OK, but by bringing it in, by dragging and dropping it in, it comes in as a new layer, as a smart object. I'm just going to tuck it. I'm going to tuck it into the corner right here, hit return. And then I'm going to tuck this other one into the corner. And we can now steal these colors 
and also be informed by them as we are digitally coloring. Now, before I get into the digital coloring process, let me give you a little bit of background on it and show you the resources we have. I'm going to take both of these smart object layers. I'm going to combine them, which will rasterize them, and then I'm going to lock them. Okay, now I'm going to save it. I'll turn on the white background. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit more, just move it off. And then I will be set up for coloring. So let's save my work. Now if we go back to the assignment, you have a link to some slides up with the instructions. An exhaustive explanation of co digital coloring. And right above that link to the slides, which really go into detail. Maybe too much detail, but I think it's really interesting stuff and helpful to your practice, especially if you like doing digital illustrations. But this is the basic process, right? Right now, we have vector line art. What we do next is we fill in behind the vector line art with flat color. And then that color should be the local color, the color the thing is, no matter the lighting condition. Thank you. I hope it works out. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I will take care of it. All right. Once you have your flat local color, which is the color the thing is, right? So for my piece, I have to think what are the colors that I would expect a hand to be, expect a megaphone to be, expect the handle of a megaphone to be, expect this glare of sound coming out of the megaphone to be, right? Largely, this is subjective. But I'm going to use like light blues, reds, oranges, grays, things like that. That's what's called the local color. And I fill it entirely, each shape, with that local color. So this is a lemon, and a lemon's local color is yellow. Right? Then you start playing with what's called toning. So duotone is to split that flat color into two tones. And this is going to be on the final exam. It's very helpful. So if you take that local flat color, like Charlie Brown's shirt is always a local flat color of yellow. But then if you have a train coming at Charlie Brown in a panel, you want to show that bright light from the train and then the shadow behind it. And so his shirt will become light and dark all on the same surface, right? So duotone splits the local color into lights and darks. If you do duotone hard edge color or what's called cell shading and animation, you get a crisp edge between the lights and darks. But if you do duotone soft edge, which is often done in digital comics, or it, it's a little bit closer to digital painting, but still with outlines, then you get this smoother gradation between the lights and the darks. So let's just start with that. If I look at these slides, it will introduce all of this stuff, right? And how it's used. And because we're working digitally now since the 1990s, uh, all printed matter is pre-pressed digitally since about 97. But before that, these were the standard ink colors that would be mixed to be put into printed matter. So it's a very limited palette. It's one you'll still see in kind of retro design. And the, the trick is to flat your colors first. You can see the flat colors, the flat colors, and sometimes the flat colors give you a finished product, like in these examples. I use Wonder Woman because of the primary colors of Wonder Woman, right? But flat color seems simple. You're just filling in your shapes with one color. But it's tricky because it's difficult to find the right color. That's where inspirations and taking colors from other sources can really help. This is so difficult, in fact, that professionally, the entry-level digital artist job is what's called a flatting artist. So you'll often see that advertised. A flatting artist makes like thirty to $40,000 a year. And it's kind of a thankless job because you take other people's line art. And then you will do this next step I will show you to their work. You fill in shapes that are in the work with distinct colors. 
They are not the right colors. They are not the local colors. They are distinct colors. The whole point of a flatting artist is that you make the colors really bold and different from each other so that the real colorist who gets paid a lot more <laughs> can replace them with the colors they want. So this is the local flat color. This is what's called flatting color. And since we are the artist, we can kind of do our flats with local color instead of with the flatting. But that's the professional step. Then what happens is those flats get turned into duotone. So this was the flat color. This would be the hard edge duotone version where you have dimensional lighting. And then that can be pushed even further with soft edged or with a third type of coloring called full spectrum. And that's where you actually mix different colors into your local colors. So the skin color now has not just peach, but also purple in it, right? Kind of like this Matisse painting has orange and yellow and pink and green and purple all in that one local color of the skin. So full spectrum is kind of the most dramatic you can make your digital coloring. These are all examples of full spectrum, sometimes subtle. Like you see just little hints of other colors in these skin tones of red. So you'll also see orange, you'll also see purple. You'll see hints of orange and blue in the pants. You'll see hints of, of red and orange along with green. That's subtle, this is less subtle, right? We start to see kind of these strong color shifts from pink to green, from purple to blue, you know, throughout this work. Now, the more you color, <laughs> so the more ambitious you get with your coloring, with various shades, like these full spectrum examples, then usually your line art gets thinner and thinner. Because if you have really, really complicated line art and then really complicated color, it all is a little too much. It muddies the communication. And then we'll talk about special effects once we're done with the basic coloring. These are things that go on top of your line art. So these slides, this exhaustive explanation, right, is your introduction to digital coloring. And digital coloring is coloring behind real or implied line art. That is how it's different than digital painting, which colors on top of sketching. Now, sometimes, you'll do the digital coloring and then you'll just remove the line art. That's still digital coloring. But here you see it with the lines, here you see it without, it's the same process. Both of these are duotone hard edge. So let's get back to our example. What's the first thing I need to do? I need to fill this with flat color, right? And I was pretty good containing all of my shapes, but I have one shape that's really clearly not contained, and that's the hand, which is open here. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that. So this is how you set up what I call the digital coloring sandwich. And this is important. It's technical. It's necessary. You set your line art up at the very top. So this is your vector line art. You lock it so you can't accidentally rasterize it or paint on it. Underneath, you turn your background into what I call a blank white layer. And then you lock it with a padlock. And what I want you to think of is that this locked layer on the bottom, which is pure white, that is a piece of white bread. That's Wonder Bread, right, on the bottom of your sandwich. This line art layer that's black, as a vector, as a smart object that you've brought in from your EPS file into Photoshop, or if you're using PhotoP, you bring in your SVG vector file. That is the black bread on top, the Schwarzbrot, the, the German bread. So we have white bread on the bottom, we have black bread on the top. What goes in between? All of our colors. So two pieces of bread do not make a sandwich, right? You need filling in the sandwich. And my favorite, most basic kind of sandwich just has one type of filling, and that's cheese. So let's make a new layer in between these two. 
your reference